Hello dear viewers, in this video as the thumbnail represented, we are going to look into the piping layout and try to understand what's wrong with it. Now this is the volume plot of the piping model with the equipment and piping model together. For the ease of piping layout engineers and designers, I have represented the volume mode of the equipment too, which generally is modeled as rigid element in Caesar 2. The same model with reduced opacity is represented here. So volume model of equipment is just for representation and better clarity. Now let me elaborate a bit about this piping model. Actually it is a plan that is top view pump section piping kept under a normal shed with 6 inch header coming out from an equipment and feeding 3 centrifugal pumps via 3 inches branches. Temperature is not much with design temperature being just 50 degrees centigrade and design pressure that of 4 bar G. So this piping layout looks pretty simple and with the process parameter that isn't much to look into it, isn't it? Many of you here may even think what's the need of discussing this 3 inch piping section line with normal temperature and pressure. I agree to this but to a certain limits only. For process, there is no problem in the layout as the valves are rightly placed, there is no such low pockets and straight run requirements are also appropriate. So process wise, it's okay. Now when looking this model from the layout perspective too, for a normal layout person, this arrangement will look fine and without posing any serious problem as piping legs and loops are provided, 3 inch branch connections are well taken care of, temperature and pressure isn't much. And supports too are adequately placed. So piping layout wise also is okay. Now coming to stress. Is this piping arrangement acceptable with the above stated conditions? At the first instance due to temperature being not much even some of the stress engineers may say yeah this is nothing there's nothing much in it. But is it so actually Observing the piping model from the equipment side, we see that 6 inch header pipe is having enough flexibility at the equipment nozzle. Further, the header is adequately supported, hence equipment being an static one, do not have higher allowables and so nozzle and stress wise there is no much concern. Now moving towards the pump side, we see the piping is adequately supported as well. There is flexibility provided in pump A and pump C. But what about pump B? At 50 degree of design temperature, do you think a flexibility is needed in this piping? Come, let's see the nozzle lobbles as provided in API 610 and compare with the analysis result as shown in Caesar 2 restraint summary. First, coming to API 610, which provides the allowable loads which the centrifugal pump nozzle can withstand, we see this table. As our nozzle happens to be the end nozzle, we need to refer to the component and resultant forces and moments tabulated against the pump nozzle side, which in our case is 3 inch nozzle. Piping loads are divided into three basic mutually perpendicular components that is the axial, circumferential and longitudinal and is depicted here as X, Y and Z respectively. Let's have a look at the Caesar 2 extracted strain summary which evaluates the piping loads at the pump nozzle with a given layout process and piping parameters along with the boundary conditions. As the stress engineers are well familiar with the screen, I'd request them to excuse me for some time as I think I need to simplify this to the layout engineer and to others who is watching this video. Basically, the piping system has been analyzed at various temperatures ranging from the maximum design to minimum design and also for the standby conditions. That's why you can see all these type of the load cases here in the report. A basic point of concern is the piping loads on the nozzles. Pump nozzles has been assigned nodes 1, 3 and 5 for the pump C, B and A respectively. Piping loads on these nozzles have been evaluated by Caesar 2 and is represented here in this snapshot. 
Here too, the software divides the piping loads into three basic mutually perpendicular components that is axial, circumferential and longitudinal and is depicted at x, y and z respectively. Similar is the representation for the moments. So looking at the restraint summary, what we see that the pump A and C piping loads on the nozzle are OK. For pump B, the same is exceeding the allowables in the design, operating and standby conditions where the pump B is operating while 2A and C are in standby. However, all the moments are well in control. So any guesses what will be the reason? Let's look at the plot once again. Pump A and C have a loop while pump B doesn't. Is that the difference? Yeah, it's actually, but that's not all. Looking at the forces closely, what we observe is that axial piping load on the nozzle is too high. It's because of the 2.5 meter straight leg which is tied to the pump nozzle at one end and relatively higher stiff 6 inch header on the other side. So. Now comes the role of stretch engineer to engineer the loads on the pump nozzle. What is seen here is that even though the temperature is not too high, the piping layout is not acceptable unless some modification is done to it. That is what is wrong with this piping layout. For stress engineers, he has few of the options to look into it. The best one of course being addition of piping loop in that leg. Similar to that of A or B, or somewhat close to that. But what if layout engineer denies having that comfort, saying that's already at the advanced design stage and blah blah blah. So stress engineers then get restricted to playing with the support arrangement or at worst with the concept of cold spring, cold pull and at the worst bellows. Just think how weird the design will look like. A piping looking pretty normal at 50 degrees centigrade to be considered for bellows, cold pull or all such stuffs. What if some of the smart guys suggested to play with the guides in the header? As guides in the header would be actually located to the pump? Well, temperature not being much higher, normal, low, normal guides may not work here as pipe movement is not so much that guides are active and the same got confirmed with the displacement report where the maximum pipe movement in either axial and lateral direction was approx 1.5 mm for the 6 inch header. So that was the maximum movement observed in the piping due to this temperature. So it's advisable to place guide with 0 mm gat in the 6 inch header is it? Well. Now if you would have noticed that I just said the pump B piping has 2.5 meter straight leg which is tied to pump nozzle at one end and relatively higher stiff 6 inch header on the another side. Hence this piping, this header on guided with 0 mm gap will only lead to increase in the expansion of stresses into the center pump piping. That is pump B piping. Same was the program. Results when it was run, providing 0 mm guide gap at the center of the header piping. So, we see that guiding don't work much. Obviously, stress engineers solve this problem with some support modification, gaps tuning, API 610 provisions, like twice of the nozzle loads and mass that is valve relocation within pipe. But still, the problem would have been killed at the very first instance if a small flexibility was provided during layout which seemed pretty much okay to begin with. Hope you all enjoyed this brief session. I will be back with some similar findings. Do discuss similar problems, like and subscribe to this video. Thank you.